So today I'm going to answer a very common question that we get at IELTS Advantage, which is how do I get a band 8 or a band 9 in IELTS listening test? And the problem is really the fact that the listening test is divided into four parts. Part one is the easiest part, and then it gets more and more difficult with part three and part four being the most difficult, especially part four. So most of the students struggling to get a band eight or a band nine have no problem with part one. They find part two quite easy, but once they start getting into part three and part four, they come across some very common problems. And then what they try and do is they try and solve it the wrong way. So there are two ways that students try and solve this problem. And if you are doing these two things, you're never going to solve this problem of trying to get a band eight or a band nine. So the first common problem is they will rely on strategies. Now, strategies do work, they do help you, but unless you have three other things that are way more important than strategies, strategies will be useless. So strategies are useful, but they are one piece of the puzzle. The bigger mistake that we see students doing is doing lots of listening tests. So often students will come to us and say, I have done every single listening test I can find, but I still cannot get a band eight or band nine. Strategies and especially listening tests are not going to help you get beyond a band seven. They are not going to help you solve part three and part four. The three things that will really help you for part three and part four are number one, listening skills. Number two, vocabulary. And number three, focus. Especially the ability to focus on multiple speakers speaking at the same time. So let's take a sentence from a listening test and analyze it to show you that these two things are useless until you address these three things. And then at the end, we're going to give you a technique that we teach our students that helps them improve their listening skills, their vocabulary, and their focus on listening all at the same time. And you will enjoy yourself whilst you're doing it. It's not often you enjoy something while you're studying IELTS. So let's say on the listening test, We hear this sentence. Do you want to go to the jazz festival? So unfortunately, in, especially in parts three and four, the speaker will not speak as clearly and as slowly as I am speaking right now. I do not speak to my friends and my family in this very slow, well-spoken way. If I was to ask this question to one of my friends, I would not say, do you want to go to the jazz festival? It would sound more like, do you want to go to the jazz festival? So that is something that is very difficult for people in part three and part four. Not that the person is speaking quickly, but they are speaking naturally. The way I am speaking to you right now is not my natural voice. I'm speaking to you right now because I, I know that you are an English learner and I'm trying to speak as clearly and as slowly as possible. So what the person really says for part three and part four when they are saying this sentence sounds more like this. Do you? And this connects together. Wanna? Connects together, go to, go to the jazz festival. So there's a few problems here for most people who are trying to get a band eight or a band nine. They're not used to connected speech. 
so here we have connected speech here we have connected speech and here we have connected speech and these schwa sounds reduced sounds because this is how most native english speakers actually speak to one another and they're testing your ability to understand real english so one of the skills is understanding this connected speech and without this skill it doesn't matter how many listening practice tests you do doesn't matter how good your strategies are if you don't understand do you want to go to you will never be able to answer this question also if we have a look at two key parts of, of this sentence jazz do you understand what jazz is lots of students trying to get a band eight or a band nine have no idea what jazz is also do you really know what a festival is and then when we combine these do you really understand what a jazz festival is there is no way that you will be able to answer this question if this is the key part of the listening if you don't understand what jazz and festival means and you cannot understand connected speech. So this is why listening and vocabulary are so important. Also, you have to be able to focus for long periods of time. Think about the last time that you really focused on listening to something in English and think about how long that was. It's probably only one or two minutes for most students. Also think about the fact that you're not just listening, you're reading, you're thinking, you're writing all at the same time. Unless you are able to focus for a long period of time, listening and thinking and writing in English, you're not going to be able to get part three and part four questions correct. But don't worry, we'll show you a really easy technique that you can use that helps you improve all three of these things. So let's say this is person one and then person two says, no, I've got to study for my finals. So what does this actually mean? You may have never heard of this word in this context. So you also have to guess what this word actually means from context no i've got to study for my finals so you might not know what finals means but from the context of the conversation you might be able to guess that this means exams or a test their final test normally a university student their final test their final exam they will call them their finals so you will never be able to understand 100% of the vocabulary, but you need to get used to guessing the meaning of some words in context while listening at the same time and thinking at the same time and writing your answer and deciding your answer all at the same time. Now that sounds very, very difficult, but it does not need to be difficult. But before we show you this technique called micro listening, Please do not go and look up some strategies, do lots of practice tests, and then waste days and weeks and you're still below a band eight or a band nine. Please use this instead. So what is micro listening? So let me show you exactly what it is. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to pick something you enjoy listening to. And the key word there is that you enjoy it. Why? Because you're going to have to do this technique every day or three, four, five times a week over weeks and months. If you came here looking for a quick tip that is going to guarantee that you're going to get a band nine, you're watching the wrong video. We don't teach you those things because those things simply do not work. Anyone teaching you quick tips to get a band nine in listening was never a real IELTS teacher. They're a YouTuber who is pretending to be an IELTS teacher. So once we pick something that we enjoy, so this could be a podcast or it could be a YouTube video, but not English learning YouTube. So not 
someone trying to teach you English on YouTube because that is not real English. Um, and most of the English learning on YouTube is going to make your English worse, not better. Pick something real, like two people talking to each other who are native English speakers. Or TV show, or for example, a news program, whatever you're interested in, or it could be a movie, whatever you're interested in, just make sure that it is real English native speakers or very high level English learners talking naturally. I would strongly recommend podcasts because A, they're free, and B, there isn't a single topic in the world right now that there aren't hundreds, if not thousands, of really great podcasts. So pick the topic that you love. You could love cooking, cricket, reading, business, leadership, whatever you're into, pick something to listen to. And here's where the micro listening comes in. All right, so you're gonna listen until you don't understand. So you don't understand. So imagine we are listening and we hear this, do you wanna to go to the jazz festival? You might not understand that because of the connected speech. Do you want to go to? So you would stop, so then stop the podcast, the YouTube channel, the movie, whatever it is. Just stop. Then you're going to listen again until you can write the sentence. Don't worry if you cannot understand the sentence fully, just listen again a few times. So listen again, pause, go back, listen again. You're just listening to one or two sentences. That is why it's called micro listening. Until you feel comfortable enough that you can attempt to write out the sentence. So for example, let's say you're listening to me interviewing a, another IELTS teacher and um, you hear, is it, Okay, if I talk to you about click bait. So you might find some of the connected speech difficult here. So is it, is it, so it sounds like a z and a T, is it okay if I, if I, it's connecting together, talk to you, so it's reduced sound here, about clickbait. What is clickbait? I don't understand this. So you're listening until there's some connected speech, or maybe the person is speaking a little bit too quickly for you, or there's some vocabulary that you don't quite understand. So we're focusing on our listening skills, our vocabulary, and we're improving our focus all at the same time whilst we're listening to something that we're actually enjoying. So listen as many times as you need to fully understand the sentence. Don't worry if it takes you five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. But if you do that, what will happen is all this connected speech will start to make sense in your brain and you'll start to become used to how real native English speakers actually speak. You don't have to worry about practicing your pronunciation at this stage. You can if you want to, but most of the students who we work with who have this problem don't really have a pronunciation problem. They have more a understanding connected speech rather than a problem with pronouncing this. And then what we're going to do is if there is a new word or a new phrase, don't look up the meaning, guess meaning from context. So what does context mean? It means the words around this word. It means the sentences around this word. You could think about the title of the podcast or what the general topic is they're talking about. So maybe I'm interviewing another teacher about why they keep putting clickbait titles that mislead students into their videos in order to get views rather than teach students. 
you would be able to guess the meaning of this word. Clickbait is when you focus on tricking the viewer into clicking on your video that shows that you're more concerned about growing your YouTube channel than you are about actually helping your viewers get better. So from this context, you can guess what this means. Remember, you will hear words that you probably will not be familiar with when you're looking at part three and part four or looking at listening to part three and part four. There will always be some words you don't quite understand. You need to develop this as a skill. One of the skills that we teach is guessing meaning from context. Not only is this going to help you guess meaning from context, if a new word comes up, you are improving the range of your vocabulary, so you're reducing the number of words that you don't know. So again, you're enjoying yourself, you're improving your listening skills, you're improving your ability to guess meaning from context, and you are improving your vocabulary. Not only will that help you in the listening test, it's also going to help you in the reading test, in the writing test and the speaking test all at the same time. So it requires a little bit more work than just going onto YouTube and looking up you know, top 10 tips to get a band nine, but this is way more effective. Finally, add new vocabulary to a vocabulary notebook can be a paper notebook, can be a digital notebook, but don't lose this new vocabulary. If you, if you don't use it, you will lose it. And then finally, review new vocab. You can review it by using it in example sentences, for example. And there are many, many, many things that you can do to review vocabulary. I'll maybe make a uh, video soon on how to review new vocabulary. And then what you do, once you have listened, use micro listening on one or two sentences, then just keep going, start again. Keep listening to that podcast or that movie or that TV show until you find something that you, again, don't understand. Pause it, start the whole process again. What you can also do is most podcasts and YouTube channels and uh, TV shows have subtitles, but turn the subtitles off while you're doing this and only turn them on to check that you are correct. Because often you'll hear a sentence and there'll be a few words that you just really don't understand at all. Try to understand them first and then turn the subtitles on at the end and check them. But just be careful on YouTube. Um, sometimes the subtitles are not accurate, most of the time they are, but sometimes they are not.